Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because she is back with her purple hair, the one and only Miss Emily D. Baker. I'm so excited to be back. I can't wait to chat. So much has happened since the last time we talked. I say this every time you're here and I mean it like I know you have your own empire that you're running, your (laughs) own social, but I really would just take you here once a week. And that's just being that the minimum, if I could, like, I just, I mean, I there's love so it. much to talk to you about. I'm, I'm here for it. There's so, there's so much to catch up on and I, I love it. And yes, I don't know if it's an empire. I mean, it's a, it's a podcast and a YouTube channel, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very busy, you know, and I don't know now this, I don't know if you're going to be insulted by this comparison. I, I mean this as the highest compliment possible, but like, to me, I get all my pop culture legal goings on from you. I mean, to me, you are like the Nancy Grace of pop culture. That's a very high compliment. I mean, she and I are both former prosecutors. I like the purple hair better. It's not quite high enough to be Nancy Grace style, but I like, you know, I didn't really think about legal commentary being my job until everything shifted in 2020. And then stuff started going off the rails and I'm like, oh, I can just do pop culture. I can just break this down. And our celebrities are no strangers to legal trouble, whether it be criminal or civil, or there's, you know, cookie brands fighting over trademark in Utah, taking over social media with hashtag Utah cookie wars. Like there's no end of, of legal. I mean, we're a very litigious society here in the U.S. We really are like, there's this new podcast fed up and it's about like, about like Tanya Zuckerbrot and the F factor. And that was, I didn't realize that was such a whole thing. Like it's like never ending. There's so much and there's so many, I mean, I've found so many great podcasts that just focus on one story or one case. And there are so many of them. And then of course we have, you know, new lawyers every day and we get to watch Kim Kardashian become a lawyer on TV. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. What, how do you feel about Kim Kardashian becoming a lawyer? Look, it's a lot of work. You know how much work it is. Um, It's a lot of education. I think that there's, you know, a lot to be said for someone who doesn't need to go to law school to have the access that she has to have the conversations that she does. She's worked a lot in prison reform and wants to know more. So I have a lot of respect for saying, look, I want to do this. I want to know more. And I want to have these conversations and be educated about them. I have a ton of respect for that. It feels like um, in Legally Blonde, she was talking in the show about her dad being like, you don't want to go to law school. Like law school's not for you. It felt like Al Woods, like, oh, honey, law school's for serious people who are boring and ugly. And it felt, I, I felt a little sad for her because it felt like she almost got told like, oh, you're not capable of doing this. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for it. It's a hard way to go through law school. She took three times to pass the baby bar in California. We'll see how it goes from here, but it's not easy. She's got to put in the work. She got to put on the work. I'm like, girl, I would just go run skims and just collect my dollars. I mean, just count the I, billion I, dollars. And I, I don't know what you want this for as a former practicing lawyer myself, but here, here I we don't are. either, but I, I respect that. She's like, when I'm in this room, having these conversations, I want to have the background for it. Now, when she says, I'm going to start negotiating my own contracts, I'm like, oh, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. I don't want to do that. Like, don't do that. But no. wanting to have more knowledge in something that you're working in, I think is admirable. I, I kind of think so too. Yep. I mean, right. So we were talking before we went on air. I mean, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp just kind of set you back, right? With all your other work. I mean, that really was all encompassing. It was all encompassing. I didn't intend to stream it every day. I ended up doing live streaming commentary gavel to gavel for most of the trial. When I started, I had intended to cover the stuff I was most interested in opening statements, closing arguments, and the key witness testimony, Johnny Depp's testimony, Amber Heard, and any other celebrities that ended up testifying. I'm so glad I ended up covering the entire thing because I could not have predicted how off the rails this trial would get, how much interest it would garner, and how many little moments there would be in court that are just unpredictable. And I should have thought about it. Court is always unpredictable but not like this. This trial had so many twists and turns and unpredictable moments. It became very memeable um, across social media and it was wild, but yeah, it was a very busy seven weeks of trial with that week break that kind of put everything else I was covering on pause because it was, 
I mean, it was day in and day out trial coverage. Do you think like Amber Heard made like one particular mistake? Like, where do you think things went wrong? Or was it just always just going to end up with a Johnny Depp victory? I think it was supposed to end up with a Johnny Depp loss. I mean, I came into this trial going, okay, I mean, you've got all the money in the world. You go ahead and you sue for defamation. Good luck with that. I thought that there was a very narrow kind of path to victory for Johnny Depp at the beginning of the trial. Um, Amber Heard's attorney, Ben Rottenborn, gave a very good opening statement on like, if that is the case they put onto this jury, they win. And that's where I was at the end of opening his opening. And then Elaine Bredehoff gets up with her kind of scattershot wandering, like, oh my God, and then this, and then this, and you'll hear this, and then this is the palette she used. And, and I'm like, oh boy, that's a different trial environment entirely. And Amber Heard's own testimony was very uh, difficult. It was kind of overwrought for a lot of it. And she was caught in some really key uh, misstatements and lies. And that is not helpful in a defamation case. Right. Is defamation just still so hard to win if you sue someone for? Yes. So hard to win. But we've seen some celebrities really go after it lately. We saw Cardi B have a big win in Georgia against a YouTube creator. And that was a surprising win as well. And Cardi B's attorneys seemed very confident going into that case. And that litigation only lasted about a year and a half before it went to trial and came back with a very quick verdict and an over $4 million win. I think we're going to see it more and more as reputation matters more and more. We're seeing companies get backlash for who they're working with on social media in a way we've never seen before. Celebrities are going to be put in a position where they almost have to sue. And we're seeing politicians sue. We just saw a former judge down in Alabama win a defamation suit against a political ad that was run against him. So I think we're going to see more of this as we see more of a culture of backlash when when society doesn't like people. So I think it's going to become more necessary. I still think it's hard to win. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Is there one thing, one case that stands out? Like, does anything shock you at this point? Like you said, like our celebrities keep us entertained. Like, is there something where you're just like, this shocks me? Like, I can't believe this person did this. This is so dumb, just in terms of committing a certain crime or like, you know, just being sloppy and cleaning up the trail. <laughs> I mean, I'm still shocked by the stuff coming out of the Girardi case. And truly, I was shocked that Jen Shaw pled guilty after how long, I mean, she ran up right till the eve of trial um, before she pled. I'm surprised at that turn of events for sure. But the things that keep coming out about Tom Girardi still surprise me. It just continues to get worse. 